What a game between Arkansas and Creighton at the Maui Invitational in the semifinals. Arkansas lost 90-87. to But if you're an Arkansas fan, it's hard to be mad about that one. I know that, you know, there was some some – Issues with the officiating. Eric Musselman had issues with the officiating. If you go through his Twitter and you look at his liked posts, it includes one of yours, Jackson. Um, you That's his way of saying that he didn't appreciate the officiating. And I don't know if you can get fined for liking posts on Twitter. So, um, But it was an incredible game. We it, it gives us a lot to talk about with this Arkansas team because, Jackson, you mentioned before we started, this team is probably better right now than we thought it was, and they don't have their best player. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to look ahead to tonight's game against San Diego State. And uh, we got a lot to get to here on the Hardwood Hogs podcast. But before we do anything, I want to let you know about our presenting sponsor, and that is Dead Soxy. This is a sock company based out of Dallas, and they produce high-quality socks with the finest yarn, and they utilize a patented technology in the welt to keep your socks from that dreaded slippage. Now, this isn't just you know me reading these ads about these socks and not really knowing anything because they sent me some a while back, and I've worn them every day. I, I threw out most of my other socks, and I've been wearing dead socksy, only dead socksy. When it talks about this this welt that is in the socks it's like a little sticky thing at the top of the socks so they don't fall down your legs it's actually really nice they're really soft they're really comfortable and they're trying to help out some hog fans to get some free socks so you can buy one get one free with our launch of the partnership with dead Soxy. just visit their website it's deadsoxy.com and at checkout if you use the code hogs h-a-w-g-s you can get a free bundle of socks with the purchase of a bundle of socks. So make sure you go to deadsoxy.com, use code HOGS at checkout, and you can get some amazing socks. I'm being for real. They're they're legit. Like it's not just, you know, go to Walmart, get a pair of socks. These are legit socks. They've got the colorways with red Arkansas socks. They're working on getting um where they can put the logos on there. They just gotta work that out with the school. So visit deadsoxy.com. All right, J.C. Hoops, you haven't even talked yet. Everybody wants to hear from you. They don't want to hear from me. Talk about the game against Creighton, man. Man, it was a uh, it was a really good game. I had fun watching that game, like just as a basketball fan. It was just really good up and down basketball. Um, like you said, some frustrating officiating at times. It seemed like, um, but man, it was just it was really good basketball. I. Uh, I don't think I expected this Razorback team to be this far along this early in the season, especially Anthony Black. We all know Anthony Black is a five-star McDonald's All-American. He had high expectations coming in. Um, man, I had high expectations for him, too. I wasn't expecting him to be putting up back-to-back 25 points. I think, he, I think he went 24 and 26 in back-to-back games, and then six to six, six, six rebounds in back-to-back games. I wasn't expecting that two or three weeks into the season. I, I I might not have even been expecting that come conference play. Um, but just an incredible performance from Anthony Black, and he's really stepped up, and, and he's really shown that he is a next-level talent, as, as we all knew, but he was a next-level talent coming out of high school, really. And the way that the team has really developed chemistry, they play really well together. Uh, the energy on defense was incredible. Um, you can look at the the box score and see, oh, well, Creighton shot whatever percentage from three and scored 90 uh, points. Like, yeah, but the defensive intensity was there. Um, Creighton's a good basketball team. They hit some really tough shots. Um, they got to the free throw line. They hit, they hit a lot of free throws. Um, but, you know, Again, credit to Arkansas for for the energy on defense. Credit to Anthony Black. Credit to the whole team for you know, really just being ahead of schedule. Musselman has said at different points, like, "Oh, we've got to be patient. This is a young team. So we're we're still implementing a lot of different things, and you had to go back and reteach things." And then they come out and really go toe to toe with one of the best teams in the country on a neutral floor, uh, and you still don't have Nick Smith uh, in the lineup yet. Um, Razorback sh- fans should come away really, really pleased with with that performance. Yeah, you mentioned it. The young, the young team. You know, the, this is a team that you thought 
here early in the season, there would be some struggles. And, you know, they, at, at times they have. You've seen at times that they, they've they struggled to score. They didn't really do that against Creighton. But my biggest takeaway, of course, Anthony Black, incredible player. I remember during the uh, exhibition against Rogers State, I put – I put out a tweet. I said, enjoy the one year of this guy that you get, Arkansas fans. And a lot of people were like, no, I think he comes back. I, he might be a later first-round pick. He might come back. Like, are you sure that he's going to be gone? I think we can all say that Anthony Black is gone. Like, enjoy this year that you get of Anthony Black because he is a generational talent. He's incredible. He has everything NBA teams want at the point guard position. And at the beginning of the year, he, I mean, he he just was timid to score. He didn't really, you know, he shot a couple threes, but he wasn't driving to the basket like he is now. And Anthony Blackman, back-to-back games with 26 points, actually. He's incredible. Um, but, yeah, this team, you knew that Creighton was going to be tough. But for them to play a game like that, that competitive, against a veteran Creighton team, um, defensively and offensively, I mean, as you mentioned, that you know the calls, but they were playing really good defensive ball. There was that one, you know, block they 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 call a foul on Jordan Walsh, but he was just all over the guy and he blocked it, and then I think got a piece of the hand and they called a foul. But I mean, it was just a great defensive play. What'd you see on that play, Jackson? Man, I thought that was a clean block. Honestly, um, even looking at the slowed down version of the film, everything like or, or the replay. He might have gotten a little bit of the hand, but I, I don't know. That looked pretty clean to me. There were several calls that were kind of suspect uh, that were similar to that. Um, I thought uh, there was a, a block at one point that Trevin Brazil had, uh, if I remember correctly, too, that they called a foul on that I was kind of iffy on. Um Yeah, we can sit here and talk about the officiating if we really want to. <laughs> it was It was not great. Um, I know Musselman, like you said, was very, um, very not happy <laughs> with the officials. It seemed like he was liking the tweets after the game and really gave a, a really short, uh, uh, presser afterwards. Um, but yeah, on, on that specific Jordan Walsh one, that, that looked clean to me, man. Well, the, the short presser afterwards was, he would have gotten a lot more questions if he was in Fayetteville, Arkansas, just put it that way. Um, but this team... They're fun. They're fun. Let's talk about some of the other guys, though, because Ricky Council played 40 minutes in this game. He played all 40 minutes. Um, he's their go-to scorer without Nick Smith, I feel like. I mean, Trevin Brazil hit some, you know, clutch threes down the stretch. Um, that was great to see what they were – I mean, they they were just taking Bra- uh, Council and just, you know, running him inside and leaving Brazil wide open at the top of the key and just toss it back to him. Boom. But Ricky Council – there were so many shots that he made that were contested. Did did you expect coming into this season for – I mean, I don't know if I should word it that way because you would expect Nick Smith Jr. to be playing, but did you expect for Ricky Council to be this talented of a scorer coming into the season? I knew he had the talent. I didn't know exactly what, what Arkansas would get out of him because of the roster makeup. You know, he was coming in as a sixth man of the year at Wichita State, and he was kind of their go-to scorer as well. And so I knew he had the ability to score and watching his film. I loved his inside game. I loved his mid range game. And um, you look at his three point percentage, his most recent year, at Wichita state, it wasn't great. That was because he was taking a lot of heavily contested shots. He was really their kind of workhorse for any offense at Wichita state, but his first year, at Wichita state, he was shooting close to 40% or maybe even over 40% from outside. So I think you're in a position now where, He is their go-to scorer, but this team as a whole, um, they're not taking a ton of threes, but the threes that they take are good shots. They're quality shots. They're open looks. And you're seeing that with the team three-point percentage, but you're also seeing that in Ricky uh, Ricky's uh, percentage as well. I think going into last night, he was shooting 36.4% from the outside. Um, And again, he hit hit some clutch shots last night. I love his mid-range game, though. It's kind of – it's different – but but it's similar in some ways to like a Jimmy Witt mid-range game where he's catching it and he's catching and turning and, and firing above defenders. He's got the high release point and the high arcing uh, mid-range jumper. It's just it's really difficult to fend, especially at the college level. Um, and you saw late in the game, they were they were kind of drawing plays for him to go there, um, especially at the end of the first half when they wanted to go on that run. I think they went to Ricky twice uh, at the mid mid-range. 
and then late in the game, they were doing the same thing as well, just because he is so good in that area. Uh, he has really crafty feet. He gets a high uh, release point and everything, like I already mentioned. He's just extremely talented offensive player. His size helps. I mean, he's a legit 6'6". He is a really, really big, physical, and talented scorer. And <laughs> walking into the season, if you would have told me that, that Arkansas was going to be without Nick Smith for Maui, uh, over the summer, uh, I, I wouldn't know where the offense would come from. I would expect Ricky would step up, but I wouldn't expect Ricky to step up this much. Yeah, we'll we'll talk a little bit about Nick Smith later on because you know that's that's the question that everybody has. That's the thread on every message board. What is up with Nick Smith? So we'll talk. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit, but it's, we don't have any information for you. Like we're not Eric Musselman, so. Um, but with this team, you saw against Creighton, they trimmed it down to really a seven-man rotation, and that was the first time you've seen that this season. You know, that's the patented Eric Musselman only going to play seven, eight guys. And uh, we'll just go. I'll just go ahead and say the seven, the seven guys. So it was the starting five that's been the starting five for four games in a row now, I think, which is Anthony Black, Devontae Davis, Ricky Council, uh, Jordan Walsh, and Mc, Mackay Mitchell. So that's your starting five. It has been for the past four games. I really don't see that changing. Trevor Brazil, he's your sixth man. Uh, played 31 minutes off the bench. And then Mikel Mitchell um, is the seventh guy. So I like that seven. I think that they did great. You know, I really like what I've been seeing from the Mitchell twins, to be quite honest with you. I feel like, you know, they didn't play a whole lot of minutes against Creighton. Um, Mikai played, let's see... I'm looking at points. Where's minutes? Oh, here we go. Makai played eight minutes, 45 seconds. Mikel played seven minutes, 13 seconds. So neither of them played more than 10 minutes. But I feel like when they're on the court, they're, you know, they're doing a good job. They don't really do a whole lot to just ruin the game for you. And that's important. Um, and also, this was such a fast-paced game that for bigger guys like them, it's hard for them to keep up. But I, I marked down at the beginning of the season, Makai Mitchell was my guy. I like Makai Mitchell. What do you think of the Mitchell twins, Jackson? Man, I like the Mitchell twins a lot. Um, unfortunately, Makai got in foul trouble early there. I mean, he had two quick fouls in the first half, and then when he came in to start the second half, picked up a quick third, um, and that really kept him off the floor. I think because he and Mikel are different players. I mean, I know they're identical twins, but mikel has got like an extra inch or two on height and an extra 25 pounds or so uh Makai is more versatile he can play the four the five he runs both of them actually run the floor pretty well for their size but um Makai was probably somebody that if he wasn't in foul trouble they could have utilized a little bit more um and it's just unfortunate that he was in foul trouble uh I'm like you though I really like Makai I like his versatility I like how he's a rim runner I like how Mikel is a really good rim protector too and uh, some of the rebounds uh, there was oh my goodness Mikel Mitchell went up and just snagged a board with one hand at one point and on an offensive rebound and then dunked it back I remember all the Creighton fans were wanting an offensive rebound. He just reached over the top. Like, he didn't go over the back or anything. He just snatched it above that Creighton uh, player and put it back for a dunk. That was an incredible play, great rebound. And that's the kind of thing, you know, Arkansas under Musselman has had some aggressive rebounders. You've had, uh, obviously, uh, last year with Jalen Williams. Um, Justin Smith was a fairly aggressive offensive rebounder, but – uh, I don't know if we've had a more aggressive rebounding duo than the Mitchell twins. They they just go up there and they snag boards uh, like I haven't seen. Um, I mean, outside of Jalen Williams, I don't know when. Um, really, really love their game. Um, they're coming along as defenders, too. Um, their interior defense is fine. Sometimes you uh, teams will try to run a switch and get Makai on the, on the perimeter. We've seen that a couple times. Um, but – all in all, man, they're they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're really contributing, uh, being ultimate role players. They're playing their minutes. They're playing their roles. They're, they're really good passers. They have great vision in the post, too, which in, in a Muslim system or in any offense, you'd love to see. Yeah, I, I'm a, I, I enjoy watching them play. Um, Musselman has talked about how Makai Mitchell is, you know, one of their better defenders. And I don't know if you would have told if you would have told me that going into this season with a team of Devontae Davis, Anthony Black, Jordan Walsh, that Makai Mitchell would be one of the better defenders. You know, I might have told you you were a liar, but here we are. Uh, you, a few stats from this game. 
Arkansas had 21 points off turnovers. Creighton had three because Arkansas only tur- turned the ball over nine times. Uh, both teams, 42 points in the paint. Arkansas had 21 points off the bench. Uh, 17 of that went to Trevor Brazil, but uh, Creighton only had three points off the bench. So it really, I mean, it really came down to the fact that Creighton shot 28 free throws in the second half. That's what it came down to, right, Jackson? I mean, like, I feel like that that's really the only discrepancy of how could Creighton have won this game. It came down to 28 free throws in the second half. No, 100%. And maybe you know. I, I'm i still unsure as to what what led to the technical foul, who the technical foul was on. It, there was no real explanation. The announcers on the broadcast didn't really know either. It was just a technical foul uh, awarded to the Arkansas bench. Musselman was very – he looked very puzzled. He was asking who who is it on, what what is going on. So, I mean, that those were two free throws that, that Creighton was gifted. Um and then obviously when you're fouling down the stretch, they got more free throws that they kind of missed. They didn't shoot a great percentage from from the line. I think they were weren't they like 21 of 28 or 29 or something like that. Yeah, 21 um, of 29. Yeah, so there wasn't like they were a great free throw shooting team, but man, you got they got a lot of opportunities. Um, Arkansas, on the other hand, shot well from the free throw line and didn't get the opportunities. I think Arkansas finished 77 percent from the from the free throw line yesterday. So uh yeah, it was – some of those calls were just not good. Uh, as objectively as possible, some of those calls were just not good. Um, I will give the refs, um, you know, a couple of them. Like the the flagrant on Devo, I could see that. Um, he, he did grab it, didn't really make a play on the ball. I could see that. I know some fans were kind of upset about that. Um, but really, some of the other ones just – especially on the perimeter uh, – there was one in the second half. Devo was just guarding on the perimeter. They got him because he was, I guess he body checked a little bit, but they were kind of letting that go on both ends in the first half. And they decided to call that on Devo in the second half. And they got him the bonus really, really early in in the the second half. It was just, it, it seemed like they weren't consistent with what they were calling between the first half and the second half. And that that's really hard as a player to adjust to. Like if officiating is bad, that's one thing. Um, but if they're consistent with how they're calling a game, then you can adjust. Like if they're being consistently soft, like calling ticky tack stuff, you can adjust to that and kind of lay off. If they're being consistently like they're letting people play, then you can adjust to that play a little bit more physical. I felt like there was some inconsistencies there that really makes it hard as a player to adjust to to what your your play style should be. Yeah. And one of the things was I was listening to the radio broadcast for most of the game and Chuck Barrett and Matt Zimmerman were talking about when that, when it was, I I think it was the technical situation that and Musselman was fired up. Like he was just angry. He was so pissed off when the, when the refs went over to the table and we're just like trying to talk about it and, you know, go look back and see what was going on. And this, it might have been a different point in the game. I can't 100% remember because there were so many times where they just had to talk about stuff. But uh, Chuck Barrett and Matt Zimmerman were like, these refs are shook up. They're like, you can tell that they are, you know, nervous. This is too, there's too much going on for them right now. They just need to take a like deep breath. And you just can't have that in a game like this. Um, I, I get it, you know, especially with a coach like Musselman breathing down your neck. The, a game this fast paced that was back and forth like that for so long, but you have to be on your A game. Like you got to throw out your A team if you're ESPN or or the NCAA or whatever it is. Like you've got to throw out your A team refs for this game. You can't have guys who are going to get shaken up and girls who are going to get shaken up and just like not be able to handle what is going on because that affects the players. If you have to stop the game. And you know, you know, blame it on a call, but really, it's because you just need to like take a second. That's not right, you know. So you cannot be visibly shook up. You can in your head be like, "Man, this is crazy," but you can't just be visibly shook up like that in a game like this, a top ten matchup between two teams that you you're you're gonna see in March. I mean, I don't know. I still think it was an incredible basketball game, though. It was really fun to watch. Uh, it was really hard to cover, especially down the stretch there where you're having to like write everything that's happening because in a game like that, you can't just leave out details there at the end. 
But one of my big takeaways was Arkansas just does not give up. There were so many times where Creighton hit what felt like a back-breaking shot, and Arkansas would come back down and hit a shot, whether it be Ricky Council, whether it be a back-to-back threes from Trevin Brazil, whether it be Anthony Black's three there with 2.3 seconds left. This Arkansas team does not give up, and I feel like with other teams, it was hard for them to stay in the fight for this long against a team like Creighton this early on. Now, later in the season, yes, but I just keep thinking about how scary this team's going to look in March, and it's if you get Nick Smith back and he's healthy and you're, the rest of your team is healthy, Jackson, I mean, the ceiling of this team is incredibly high. No, 100%. And, you know, I'll kind of echo those sentiments about resiliency. I was talking to one of my uh, good friends on the phone this morning, actually talking about the game, and his big takeaway was also resiliency. You know, there was a point, I think, to close out the first half, Arkansas was down 10 or 11 points, and they go on a short little run to cut it to six, uh, you know, taking momentum into the second half. And that was huge because it was – all momentum was training to Creighton and – Nothing was really going Arkansas's way. They were missing shots, and Creighton was making their shots. And uh, they ended on a little run, got a couple stops, and Ricky Council, I think, uh, led that run, too, at the the end of the first half. And then at one point in the second half, you had Baylor Shireman pull up from uh, one of the separate islands of Hawaii um, and knock down a three. That was an incredible shot. Like. You don't you don't take that shot unless you know you're going to make it. I mean, he barely crossed half court. You you don't just be like, oh, I'm just going to take that. No, you, you know that's going in. You're in the zone and you take that shot. But he he hit that. And all momentum again was going to Creighton. And here comes Arkansas right back again. And then, like you mentioned, to close out the game, you had Brazil hitting some, uh, some tough shots. You had Council hitting uh, a tough three uh, to close out the game. Um, man, it was, the resiliency was – Incredible, especially from a young team. You have 11 new players. You have six freshmen on this team. And Trevin Brazil's a sophomore. It's not like he's a, a senior leader yet. I just I came away very impressed with, with the resiliency, with, with with all of the competitiveness and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, like you said, we're just a few weeks into the season. This team is going to be scary come March. If they, I mean, if they keep developing and if what Musselman has said is, is 100% true and we have no reason to doubt him that – they are still developing it. They're still a work in progress. They're still having to reteach all these things because they are so young and because they have so many new pieces. If all of that is true and you still had the performance yesterday, it, it it's, it's that we are looking at potentially the best team Arkansas has seen since the national championship team. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, is you want to keep sitting here and saying like, well, uh, they got a lot to learn about and they sure they do. And I'm thinking, okay, at some point they're going to have one of those lulls that teams have had under Eric Musselman. Um, I don't know if this team is going to have that. You know, like I I don't see this team like losing a home game to Vanderbilt. I just don't see that happening. I don't see them going to Little Rock and losing a game against, you know, I don't even who they who do they play in Little Rock this year? Do you know off the top of your head? Okay, let me let me pull up the schedule because I feel like that's going to be a, an important game, especially for Eric Musselman after they lost in Little Rock last year. Uh, let's see. They play Bradley. So you don't want to lose to Bradley in Little Rock, but I don't know if this team is going to have one of those lulls. If they do, I think Arkansas fans are at the point now where it's like last year when they had a lull and they were losing games and they lost to Vanderbilt at home. They lost to Hofstra in Little Rock. People kind of jumped off. They're like, okay, this team is not good. You know, let's just give up on the season because that's how Arkansas fans are. And – I think at the point in, you know, Eric Musselman, in the Eric Musselman era, when that happens, you just kind of shrug it off and you're like, okay, they'll be fine come the NCAA tournament. So this team, I cannot wait to see what they look like come NCAA tournament time. But uh, let's uh, let's just stick with what they got going on today, and that is a game against San Diego State, who lost to Arizona last night. They lost 87-70. to 70 to Arizona, a good Arizona team, but San Diego State also ranked. And according to Bet Saracen, who is partnering with Hogbeat.com, they are the official sports book for the Saracen Casino Resort, the mobile gambling app, Bet Saracen. Download it. San Diego State is a one and a half point favorite, Jackson. Did you expect that? Because I did not expect that. No, I did not expect them to be favored. Um, 
I do like San Diego State's team. They 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 have a solid squad. Um, I've actually kept up with them a little bit for the past few years, um, just because my fiance's dad is a big fan. That her whole family's from San Diego, so kind of have kept somewhat in touch with with their seasons and stuff. And you know, another team with guard depth, with uh, good outside shooting, solid defense, you know, gets to the free throw line. It's going to be a tough matchup, but I think really, yes, I am surprised that they're favored. They are a solid team. I think Arkansas wins the game personally. Um, And really that's because I feel like Arkansas is going to control the rebounding battle. Um, This San Diego state team is not a great rebounding team. Um, Arkansas is a good rebounding team. Uh, If Arkansas crashes offensive boards, closes out possessions on the defensive end, um, I really think, you know, minimizing second chance points and all that sort of stuff and capitalizing on second chance points yourself. Really think Arkansas comes away with a victory today. So basically what you're saying is if you go to Bet Saracen on the App Store or the Google Play Store, you pull up the Arkansas San Diego State game, you see that Arkansas is plus 100 money line. That's just free money. They're just giving away free money. Is that what you're saying? I might not go that far, but (laughs) I I do really, really like Arkansas's chances. Okay, fair enough. I think that uh, this Arkansas team after last night, you know, I think it's hard to say that they're going to lose any game or be out of any game like this. I'm it, I, I'm still just thinking about that game. That was just incredible basketball, and I'm excited to watch Arkansas play San Diego State 9 p.m. Central time tonight, Wednesday, on ESPN2. It's going to be a late game. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, and this is just a personal thing. I'm glad that they drew the 9 p.m. slot rather than the 4 p.m. slot because I have a dinner tonight. So it works out better for me personally. But, of course, you would rather see Arkansas playing in the championship game against Arizona. Um, but really the, the, the championship game that matters is later on down the road. So Arkansas playing another ranked team, number 17, San Diego State. This is going to be really good for the RPI. Because, you know, you look at last season, Arkansas's non-conference wasn't that great. And so playing a team like Creighton, playing a team like San Diego State, that's really going to help them down the road. Uh, so hopefully, you know, later on when it comes to seeding, if Arkansas's record is what, you know, you expect it to be and maybe they have a win against San Diego State, a really close loss to Creighton, they're going to look at that and, you know, factor that in. So, um, man, this team's going to be fun. And I'm excited to do this podcast, too. No offense to football and the Gridiron Hogs podcast and Robert Stewart, but I was I, I was done with football, man. I was done with the football podcast. Um, I'm ready for some basketball, and uh, I'm glad that we got J.C. Hoops, who is just incredible. Everybody loves you, man. You excited? Man, this is my time of the year. <laughs> it just – it really is. I – there is nothing like college basketball. I absolutely love it. I The past couple of days, it's been great because I finished up with classes for the semester. So I'm just on final schedule and I don't have any finals until December. So yesterday and the day before, I woke up, made my breakfast, made my coffee, did some things around the house. And I watched college basketball from 10 a.m. until I went to bed. And it's like it's almost like it's March Madness because that's what he, that's what you do when when March Madness comes. It's preseason basketball tournament time, and it's just so much fun. I'm watching so much good basketball right now, and just having the best time. It, it, it's incredible. It's feast week, baby. It is feast week, and then we get. I will say one thing about football: Thanksgiving football is incredible. I love Thanksgiving football; it's the best. But feast week is just it's it's a different level. And it's it's so much fun to have Arkansas competing in the Maui Invitational. You know they couldn't they could not be playing in one of these. So it's a lot more fun when they are. So all right, you've been listening to the Hardwood Hogs podcast. Before we go, we want to remind you about a sponsor of the Hogbeat Podcast Network, and that is MyPerfectFranchise.net. So you probably heard me talk about MyPerfectFranchise.net pretty often, but if you're a displaced corporate executive or wanting to put your career in your own hands or you are an experienced entrepreneur wanting to diversify, you need to call Andy Ledecky because he's a longtime 
franchise veteran. He's owned multiple franchises and businesses, and he takes that expertise to help others find their American dream through a very thorough and free consultation process. Call Andy, put your life and career in your own hands. It's 100% free, so what do you have to lose? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Just call him 404-973-9901 or visit myperfectfranchise.net for more information. All right, Jackson, we're going to get this podcast rolling now. It's basketball season. Football's got one more game and then a bowl, but it's basketball season. So make sure you tell your friends about the Hardwood Hogs podcast. Visit hogbeat.com. Follow us on Twitter, at Jackson Collier, at Chote Mason. And we'll be talking to you guys later on the Hardwood Hogs podcast.